now. Alright. Hello everybody and welcome back to BattleBots What If, the second episode of BattleBots What If. Joining me to in this episode is Spin Doctor, uh BattleBots uh, the BattleBots man Porinog. I couldn't find a cool name for you. I'm the BattleBots man now. No, wait, no, I have a good Oh, he's the BattleBots collector. No, I have a good nickname yeah. for you now, Pori. Uh we have Cool Guy Green Square, and we have the hug. We have the biggest teddy bear on the planet, Cory Nog. There we go. Oh, okay, I, that works. Cory Bear is real. Exactly. So, yeah, last episode we did the uh, ABC brackets. We kind of had part of the recording cut off, but just so you know, Witch Doctor won the 2016 bracket twice. So. That is the winner of the 2016 bracket, and as well, people do know that Lockjaw was the winner of the 2015 bracket. So we're going into Discovery now. Um, we're going to probably do the first season of Discovery and the second season of Discovery. Probably do the third season of Discovery next episode, and maybe have all four, five of us, uh, everyone here plus Oblivion, do that podcast maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. But... Yeah, so first off, we have the 2018 bracket, which I gotta say, this is a really stacked bracket, if I do say so myself. You got, like, five bots that made the quarterfinals at some point. Well, technically six if we count some of Wayachi. Um, six, uh, uh, four bots that made the semifinals at least once, uh, uh, Three bots that made the finals at least once, and one and two bots that have won a championship. So, yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on this bracket? Yeah, you kind of said a lot about this one. Like, there are lots of great fights on here. Like, I'm mostly eyeing those two fights to the left side there. I've always wanted to see Tombstone and Son of Voyachi fight as... I think that would end very quickly, but I think it'd be such a badass fight. Witch Doctor and Sawblaze, and we've seen those two fight in both 2019 and 2020, but in 2018, not sure how th that would go exactly. That would res that would result in like some further discussion when we get to that one. And then on the right side, we got a rematch and another matchup that could potentially be interesting here. Lots of good fights here. Corey Spin, what do you guys got on this bracket? I, uh, this looks really fun to, to this looks really fun, and I'm excited to discuss it. Though there's one match in particular that makes me really sad. And what match is that? Um, bottom, bottom right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be kind of an easy one to discuss. Mm -hmm. Boy, what do you have on this bracket? We haven't heard from you yet. Uh. I mean, Tombstone and Sal is a pretty cool matchup. So, I mean, do two rematches, you know. Um, we'll get to those. Uh, Yeti versus Warhawk might be closer than people think, maybe. So, first up, we have the Tombstone versus Son of Boyachi matchup. This is a dream matchup for many people, including myself and probably everyone in this podcast. And yeah. Tombstone in the regular season went 4-0, and taking out Duck, Gigabyte, Minotaur, and Whiplash, while Sal had a pretty solid 3-1 and record, took out Monsoon, Lucky, uh, Endgame, and lost to Brutus. So, yeah, Tombstone lost to Bombshell of all bots in the first in the first round of 2018, and Son of Ayachi lost to Lockjaw. So, yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on this matchup? I'll just go first then. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think, I, like I said before, I think this fight would end very quickly because we got two monster spinners right here. There's so, so much power here, and I imagine the arena is going to get destroyed worse than when uh, Deep Six destroyed it, Tombstone destroyed it in their fight with Minotaur. I think there'd be even more damage to the arena after these two clash, which... Honestly, I could say is a reason why these two haven't fought so far, other than the fact that any time these two are set up to meet, they end up getting, at least one of them ends up getting eliminated before they can fight each other. But in terms of who I think would win, 
Like, Son of Waiachi is definitely the less reliable robot, but Tombstone has so many more exposed areas, and the question is, can Son of Waiachi get to them? And I think because of those exposed areas, I'm probably going to lean towards Son of Waiachi for this one, but not by much, as I definitely think Tombstone could could pull this victory off very quickly, but potentially just through the power of their own spinner, because we've seen... We've seen some damage that full body spinner has taken, like from Sawblaze's hammer saw, and so on. A few other examples too. So, yeah, I'll vote Son of Waiachi for this one. Um, hey, um, like Green said, it's like it's pretty much a matter of who gets the first hit. But I do feel that Ray is a good enough driver that he won't let Sal like rip off one of his wheels, and I do feel that. If they went weapon on weapon, that Tombstone would probably have the edge. Because, like, Sal's weapon is technically heavier, but, like, it's more, uh, what's the word? Like, instead of it being one blunt bar, it's, like, the whole thing, you know? Um, and I feel like Tombstone, if Tombstone gets the right hit, it could, like, mess up, like, you know, the, the braces and stuff, which would definitely slow Sal down. And, like Green said, I feel Sao is a little less reliable, so I would probably go Tombstone on this. Spin, what do you got? On I this? am also gonna. Oh, sorry. I am also gonna go Tombstone. Um, as as Pori said, Ray's a really good driver. I don't think Sao's gonna get to the side. Yeah. Though, I will say that I, I like um Sao is really powerful, and Tombstone I. Not sure if they're in tip top shape this time in the bracket, but um, I still I'm gonna give it to Tombstone based on its reach and race driving. And I think Sal being more of a blunt and Tombstone, correct me if I'm wrong, being more of like a cutter. I, I'm not sure if that's accurate, but like just the shape of the bar, I think Tombstone has the edge. In my opinion, in yeah, this, my opinion on this fight, or did you want to say something, Green? Yeah, I was going to chime in, kind of like reply to something that Spin Doctor said. Uh, Battlebots is, Chris Rose is kind of mentioning this before Tombstone's fight with Gigabyte, but Tombstone's frame actually did take a huge amount of damage after the Minotaur fight, and apparently Tombstone only had one frame for that season, too. So, something to also yeah. consider, too, would, is exactly what Spin Doctor said how good of shape is Tombstone in for this fight, which clearly they were holding up very well, at least from when they fought bombshell that season and stuff so yeah it held yeah. up well to an 0 and 4 bot good job <laughs> well they only lost their weapon chain and stuff like they yeah. didn't take any damage frame wise and they only got high centered oh yeah yeah so, that's true so i don't i don't blame that on like their frame and stuff like yeah yeah well, it kind of was their frame because like i think the chain broke because it was like they kept rewelding it together and stuff and it was like either shortening the frame or lengthening the frame and that was what caused the uh the, the chain to break there's one shot in particular that i would be eyeing that bombshell and tombstone had that i think could have potentially done it too but that's definitely a possibility pori i'm not sure exactly which one of us is right that's just what I heard. So, I could. I, I mean, yeah. I don't have a source, so I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't have a source for my info either. Like that's most like my idea is just coming from me watching the fight, so I could be wrong. My opinion on this fight, um, I feel like this will both bots will exchange some heavy blows on each other, but I think the main thing that will be the deciding factor factor is the stability of both robots. I think Sao is the more stable of the two as. Its weapon is, like, it's basically a full-body spinner, even though it's not classified as one. So, that makes... Full-body spinners are a lot more stable than bots like Tombstone are. Uh, so, I think Son of Waiachi can take advantage of that stability and take advantage of the exposed areas, as Green Square said. So, I'm voting Son of Waiachi, which makes it a tie unless anyone wants to change their vote. Gonna pull out the coin? No, I dare came... me to pull out the son nope, of Waiachi nope. poker chip. Nope, I came prepared Take for this. Take out the coin. I, I yep. came prepared for this. So, this episode was actually planned out to come out a few weeks ago. And beforehand, we asked Spin Doctor and Oblivion Prime to give us our bracket predictions. Now, as you can see, Spin Doctor is here, so we already have his bracket, bracket um, 
opinions, but we still don't have Oblivion Prime's opinions. So if there's a tie ever, I'll just use Oblivion Prime's vote as the tiebreaker. And, Obli and Oblivion Prime has voted for Tombstone to win it. Oh yeah, King. Nice. My Wayachi poker chip is sad that we didn't flip it. Oh, yeah, I thought you mean, I thought you said you had a son of Wayachi one. But... I was gonna be like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tombstone. Uh, wins whatever. It. Tombstone wins it. Moves on to the second round, where it will fight the winner between the 2016 champ Witch Doctor and Sawblaze Witch Doctor. Kind 2016 of... champ. Yeah, in this series. <laughs> oh, so, that's your meaning. Yeah. yeah. So Witch Doctor kind of had a a meth three and one run. It took it lost first fight to Yeti, but. Then kind of bounced back, taking out bots like Blacksmith, Ultimo Destructo, and Overhaul. Sawblaze, on the other hand, also... Just that's an easy schedule. Yeah. So Sawblaze, on the other hand, is also a pretty meh 3 and one Losing to Bronco but and beating Overhaul, Reality, and Mohawk. So And yeah, this is a huge rivalry in the battle bots world now, as both bots have fought in each other twice. Witch Doctor with one win, and Sawblaze with one win. So this is kind of like the quote-unquote tiebreaker of this. So yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on this matchup? Um, I'll go first. Um, okay, so both of them pretty much got, like, Free wins, pretty much, because you know yeah. Sawblaze was unproven at the time, and Witch Doctor's a fan favorite with a lot who had a loss to start out. So of course they got free wins, but um, at the same time, I feel at this point at least Witch Doctor was delivering some decent hits here and there. Like they weren't, it wasn't anything compared to like twenty, like twenty nineteen, where they're like sending like gigabyte flying through the air like a UFO, but like they were still decent at this time it wasn't quite clocked in but the thing with saw blaze is that their hammer saw didn't exist yet at this point and i don't see saw blaze winning this fight with the with just like a you know like a circular saw like pink and sparks like it'll look pretty and you know they might even get the driving game on point but i feel like they're just not going to be able to do a lot with that because they don't have the weapon that does the real damage yet so i'm gonna probably go with witch doctor on this yeah, I'm going to agree with, with Pori on that. I think I'm going to vote Witch Doctor as well. The thing is, is that, like, while Sawblaze is clearly not uh, afraid to go weapon on weapon with reality, I think this would be a much different case with Witch Doctor here. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, we saw with Endgame game, when Sawblaze fought them in the uh, USA versus the rest of the world event. Sawblaze refused to go weapon on weapon with Endgame just because Endgame would trash their saw if that happened. I think this yeah. would be the same case with Witch Doctor here, where Sawblaze probably would want to avoid go we going weapon on weapon because a similar thing would probably happen to what happened in the Ribot fight in the next season, where Sawblaze went weapon on weapon with Ribot's vertical spinner and Sawblaze's saw got chewed up, and I think that's honestly the real reason why they used the hammer saw against Son of Waiachi. Well, that was definitely the right call in my opinion on Jameson Goh's part. And also, but the other thing I'm thinking of, the other thing I'm thinking of here is the reality fight. Because, like, Reality was able to use their range and stuff to eventually bend the forks on Sawblaze and start getting oh, yeah. underneath them and laying some hits of their own. Witch Doctor is much better, in my opinion, when it comes to reach with their vertical spinner. And so I think that's a key advantage for Witch Doctor if they can bend the front forks. Because if they can bend the forks, I think Sawblaze is done from there. And I think I think Witch Doctor will win this. I don't want to say a dominant fashion. I bet Sawblaze will start out with a control moment or two. But I think Witch Doctor will control it from there. Spin, what do you have in this fight? I... I was I, I was originally gonna go with Sawblaze because I did think it was gonna outdrive. I think it was gonna out control. And even though the saw might not do as much damage as a vert, I do think it was gonna do enough to like at least squeak a buy in the decision. But the more I think about it, Sawblaze like forks aren't 
to the ground that well. Like it does lift up a lot. It has a good pushing power. Mm. It pushed Endgame quite a bit in the in the fight. But um, I do think this is like the only time Witch Doctor's Feet of Wedge might help it out here, because it's just gonna get under uh, Sawblaze and just gonna wreck it. But I do think it's closer than what you guys are saying. Is another thing, um. Did Sawblaze have like that like curved thing on the top of its hammer saw that it had in uh 2019 where like it kind of functioned also to like where it would keep it from like bouncing up when it went forward because I want to say it didn't have that yet at this point either. I don't think I don't think I don't think, I don't think so because I know Sawblaze was a little bouncy in the reality fight. Uh-huh. Same thing with the end game, and I want to say I want to I want to say even overhaul too. No, Bronco actually, not overhaul. Yeah, Bronco. I'm researching it. We're, we're doing research. Why not? Every season three. Um, uh, my opinion can on I say this... something real quick though. Sure. Yeah, it did not. It did not have that. Um, can I say something though. Um, sure. Yeah. I don't think Witch Doctor in 2018 has ha- has as good reach as Reality did, mainly because that feeder wedge is getting kind of in the way. That's like. Yeah, that's fair. That's true. Spin does bring up a good point. Um, this is kind of a complicated one because both bots weren't really don't, haven't really lived up to the name that they have today at this point in the season. Like Witch Doctor is kind of just like an overrated like glass cannon at this and in previous seasons, and Solid Blaze is only partook in uh, basement fights in previous seasons. So, yeah. What I think will happen is that um, Sawblaze will start out strong, get a few pushes and maybe a few saws on the rib cage on Witch Doctor. But I think at some point, Witch Doctor will snipe a wheel, and then it will be all Witch Doctor from there. So I, I'm gonna go Witch Doctor here. It sounds like we're unanimously going for Witch Doctor here. So yeah, I think- something I might as well chime in for. Uh- just, just off of Spin's comment a little bit. Don't forget that Witch Doctor updated their front for, I believe, the overhaul fight. And I want to say whoever their third opponent was to Ult- do, so that way their weapon could reach and stuff and hit their yeah Ultimo Destructo, so where they were testing out a reach configuration compared to Yeti and Blacksmith, I believe it was where they where they used the wedge that kind of like Spin was talking about and stuff, but. Yeah. 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 So next fight we have Warhawk versus Yeti. Uh, Yeti, who had a fairly solid three and one season, took out Witch Doctor, lost a fight to Yeti. Where a lot of people say if it didn't have that like wire problem that it had in the fight, it would have won and gone for it. And then it also beat Bombshell and Batunia. Warhawk had some was a kind of meh three in one, but had some damn good fights. Um, Warhawk lost to Brutus in his second fight, but took out Axe backwards, uh, overhaul and free shipping. Free shipping versus Warhawk is one of my favorite fights of all time, and for good reason. It's a good one because War free shipping uses its own broken forks as a flail, so that's amazing. But, uh, yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on this one? First of all, I disagreed with Yeti and Bombshell, as I think Me Bombshell too. should Me have too. won that decision. Me too. And, but, yeah, I felt, yeah, and, and I also feel like Bomb, Yeti would have beaten Ice Wave if they didn't yeah. lose power, like what Civilian said and stuff, and which I thought was a, which I think kind of makes up for that. Yeah, not right. as good victory that they got with Bombshell, but in this battle, like Warhawk definitely has the advantage weapon wise, because like between like a vertical spinner and a drum spinner, a vertical spinner will almost certainly win it. A few exceptions to that could be Minotaur, like when they took on Death Roll and Endgame last season, where Minot where they where they went weapon on weapon of both of those robots, and they won quite a few of those exchanges against both robots, and 
But yeah, I feel like if these two went weapon on weapon, Warhawk's definitely going to get the better of those. So I think this would definitely be a much closer fight than what a lot of people think. Yeah. But I'm the reason why I'm still going to vote Yeti is because Warhawk was definitely not the most reliable robot here. Like, Warhawk performed great against Axe Backwards and as well free shipping. But Brutus and Overhaul... Like, Overhaul was not the, a good fight, in my opinion, because Warhawk managed to land one or two shots, and then he just lost drive on one side for the rest of the fight, and yeah. where Warstop I, ended up being the big star of the show there. Warstop and, carried it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think Overhaul would have won that fight with Warhawk if it wasn't for Warstop high-centering Overhaul once or twice, but... But yeah, overall, though, I think those reliability problems that Warhawk has had, this could be a case where they could cost Warhawk the match, and would be a big concern for me if these two ever fought, and I'm gonna vote Yeti because of that. Like, I think Warhawk will get a good start on it, but then, yeah, those reliability problems are something I would be keeping an eye on when considering predicting a fight between these two. Yeah, damn, you're stealing my thunder, man. That's pretty much what I think. Like, and I thought that was going to be a hot take that, like, if Warhawk actually was like fully functional, it could probably win this fight. But yeah, I'd agree on that. You know, it just it's just not. If it was fully functional, I would vote for Warhawk, but it's not. It's probably not. I mean, it was even having drive issues in the Bronco fight, wasn't it? Yeah, really, it, so, it like, wasn't. Ha- like, it was driving it was perfectly bit. fine until. Until Bronco flipped it into the screws and it popped out. Really, after yeah. that flip, Warhawk started having issues and Bronco finished it off. Yeah, so I, I feel like just because Warhawk proved several times in the, that season that it just wasn't that reliable of a robot yet. Well, I guess next season didn't really prove it either, but yeah. I'm going to probably have to go Yeti because of that. Spin, what do you got on this? Uh, you guys are basically saying what I'm saying because, yeah, I agree. Warhawk would have the early advantage in this. I think what would happen is Yeti's going to charge at Warhawk and Warhawk's just going to win the weapon on weapon contact battle. However, as the match goes on, I think Yeti being as reliable as it is and aggressive as it is, as it is it's just going to keep attacking. It's going to keep going. And then w- I think Warhawk's just going to, at some point, just have a drop off point where it just starts to drive worse, where like something just goes wrong. I- I just don't trust Warhawk to survive the battle, and I think Ob- Yeti's just eventually going to take it. Oblivion, are you joining? Are you joining hey, this Oblivion. podcast mid podcast? Got it so far. <laughs> Tony does. That's the that's an Oblivion moment. Joining mid. Oh yeah, <laughs> like he joined Fantasy Robot League the season when we recently recorded. Lay into a bit of it. Well, he can hang around. around. Yeah, you can what? hang around, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Oblivion. Mess, yeah, somebody message. should put him at... Oh, Oblivion's yeah. back. Perfect. I mean, you can hang around. That's yeah, cool. definitely. You can partake in this podcast, or at least, uh, or at yeah. least a civilian says that's okay. Bro, he's... Yeah, civilian's just gonna be like, no. He's allowed to join. We're, we're on a Warhawk versus... Uh, what happened? We're on Warhawk versus Yeti right now. What do you think? What's your take on Warhawk and Yeti, Oblivion? Um... You know, actually, um, I'm sorry for joining randomly in the middle like this, but I happen to have a bit of free time. Um, That's why I man. have to go Yeti. Hey, uh, I have to go Yeti simply because I don't trust Warhawk. And this could be a pretty <laughs> good reason. match. It really could. Like, um, it's a pretty good match. But then you have fights like Warhawk versus Brutus, where Warhawk is like super unreliable. So I don't trust it to last too long against Yeti. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. basically what we all said. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all said the same thing. I don't think we've heard civilians take that uh, I remember of. Opinion is basically everything but, everyone else. But yeah, has at said least the so other three so, of us yeah. have said the same thing. So yeah, we're all going Yeti. All right. All right. Next fight, we got a rematch between Huge and Ice Wave. Huge went three and one, taking out Sub Zero, free shipping, and Chomp. Where. And then it got bodied to Ice Wave. Ice Wave bodied, uh, Ice Wave bodied Huge and Vanquish. Kind of got a meh win over Yeti, and then lost a somewhat controversial decision, but that I agree with to Scorpios. 
So yeah, do we need to discuss? Yeah. Do, do we need to discuss this part of this fight much? Or no? Yeah, I got stuff to say. I got stuff to say. Um, first hey. off, no, no, we don't need to discuss it because Ice Wave would win. But I, I do feel I need to say that my hot take of the day that uh, if Huge and Ice Wave fought in like a later season where Huge had wheels that weren't like off. I feel like Huge would probably beat Ice Wave. Yeah, I mean, if we're taking like season four Huge with the wheels used against Son of Wayachi, I would say it would beat Ice Wave. Yeah, I, I, but I agree. in twenty in twenty eighteen, it did not have those wheels. Ice Wave yeah. would win again. Yeah, I, I agree. I do have to point one thing though. In like um, Huge versus Son of Wayachi in season four, the wheels did break. But as Mister Psycho said, I'm pretty sure that's a combination of the fact. Yeah, Son of Wayachi just has massive hammers, and instead of cutting through the wheels, it just breaks the wheels essentially. So Ice Wave's Ice Wave's uh, blade tips are are pretty sharp. They're designed to cut through, not break it. Yeah. So Ice yeah. Wave should be able to take the hits in season four. Yeah. Yeah, I agree definitely. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with Pori that if Ice Wave and Huge fought like in this upcoming season, maybe because. You never know. We could be seeing an Ice Wave Huge rematch in this upcoming season. I would probably predict Huge for that one, because I feel like if Huge went with one of their shorter bars, or similar to like what they did with Gigabyte, Son of Wayachi, uh, Ice Wave even in the previous season, I think I, I think Huge could nail the control box area for the weapon and and uh, destroy it like what Rotator did when those two fought in this season. But yeah. for this season, but for at least for this, I would have to vote Ice Wave for that. But I think Ice Wave will win it even faster than they did in the previous one. Cause yeah, would I would I, yeah, cause like yeah, cause cause like huge yeah, cause like huge. Th- apparently, huge was able to repair that repair the damage they took when they got split in half the first time, and not a terrible amount of time apparently. If I remember from from reading Ice Wave's blog on that fight, but uh, they it clearly something something was off with with repairs made because they got split in half when they fought Bite Force in real life. So, but you think about it: if Ice Wave didn't go in for that final hit against Huge, Bite Force Huge really could be. have lost in the round of sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> that's so jarring to think. I wish I was in that universe. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Spin, what do you got since we haven't heard from you yet on this fight? My condolences to Huge. I think we're all going <laughs> for Ice Wave on this one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, it was pretty much the, like, the very last fight to happen uh, before, the, uh, before the round of 16. So it's Pretty obvious, huge would lose a rematch. So we got our final four here. We got Tombstone, the 2016 champ witch doctor. Well, technically, we got the real life 2016 champ Tombstone, and then our what if 2016 champion witch doctor. So the battle of the 2016 champions there. Huh? I didn't realize witch doctor beat Sawblaze. Um. What did I put as my original uh, original vote? Like I think you I put Sawblaze. Uh, I think you put Sawblaze. Yeah, I don't honestly. Like, how many of you voted that Witch Doctor would beat Sawblaze? All of us. All of us. It's all of us. Really? I, I convinced. Don't, I, don't I convinced. Them. I switched everyone. votes. Hey, hey, hey! I convinced him. Twenty, like Spin. twenty eighteen. I convinced Doctor ben. was like really, really mad. So was Sawblaze. Yeah, but so was twenty eighteen. Sawblaze was pretty mad too, and my argument Ooh, was that Sawblaze. My it my argument is that Sawblaze did didn't have uh it didn't have the hammer saw yet. It just had like the regular like saw. And that saw yeah, really wouldn't do that like much to Witch Doctor. Sawblaze versus reality, right? Like Here, Sawblaze here's, my, would have... here's my argument <laughs> at least, because if you remember Witch Doctor versus Overhaul, and I wanna say Witch Doctor versus Ultimo Destructo as well, where Witch Doctor went for Reach rather than ground game like what they did with Yeti and uh yeah. Blacksmith. Uh Witch Doctor has definitely got a bit more... I feel like Witch Doctor has more reach and a, definitely... I don't know about the reach part, but they've definitely got more power than the drum spinner of of uh, reality. And 
I feel like if Witch Doctor, if Witch Doctor bent the forks on Sawblaze, similar to what Reality eventually was able to do in that fight, uh, I think Witch Doctor would take it from there. And you mean the you mean Reality that, that robot that reality lost the duck was meant to be a reach drum. Uh, Sawblaze in 2018 wasn't. I don't see them getting too much reach, especially because they were. Um, it was a dual disc spinner, right? A disc. Um, yeah. I don't see it landing perfect shots on Sawblaze's uh, pontoon to really spring it up. Huh? Maybe. Obliv- Oblivion, if it makes you feel any better, we used you as a tiebreaker for Tombstone versus Son of Voyage. <laughs> Yay. <Yeah. Huh? laughs> that, was, that was another close fight, but uh, I thought Tombstone was a bad... Yeah, I could have gone with Son of Ayachi simply because Tombstone was pretty unreliable. At that point, it was pretty not durable, but... You know. Alright, all right, so... Son of going, wasn't that reliable. But. Going into the semis, our first fight, we have the real-life 2016 champ Tombstone versus the What If 2016 championship Witch Doctor. This is once again a huge rivalry for Witch Doctor, as Witch Doctor has taken on Tombstone twice, lost once, and won once. Also, the winner of that rivalry on each fight, whenever that the winner wins, they lose half their weapon. When Witch Doctor beat Tombstone, they lost half their weapon, and when Tombstone beat Witch Doctor, they lost half their weapon. Oh, and then very, the same year they beat each other, they make it to the finals, so... Yeah. So, yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on this one? Ah, uh, Tombstone. I have to go with Tombstone. So, um, Witch Doctor in 2018, again, it was just meh. Like, it was decent. It wasn't really good. It, it went really under the radar for me. I don't... I don't see Witch Doctor surviving that long. Especially since it got absolutely bodied by both Yeti and Minotaur. Um... Tombstone should be able to clip wheels. It should be able to rip off the wedge or do some serious damage. I can see Witch Doctor pulling off an upset, but uh, Tombstone would probably win this fight. Yeah, kind of like I'm with my agree. take on this one, I'm I'm not I'm not confident in the durability of Witch Doctor from this season because, like, similar to what Oblivion said. And like Yeti massacred Witch Doctor in that one with that drum spinner when they went after them, just trying to smash them apart and stuff in that battle. And well, they were able to, well, they were taking the hits pretty well against Minotaur. Minotaur eventually got to the wheels, but was clearly winning a lot of those exchanges. I feel Tombstone is much bigger than both of those spinners and stuff. And and yeah, I feel like parts are going to fly off Witch Doctor in this. Whether that's like splitting the wedge apart, destroying the weapon, getting to some wheels, I don't know. But my vote goes to Tombstone for this one. I have to point out that even even in 2019, Witch Doctor was arguably at the apex of the Zenith. Oh, when I mean, they fought Tombstone and Dreamers, in spite of it being a really uh, like under a minute, in spite of the fi- in spite of the fight being super short. And which doctor essentially dominating? He still took a lot of damage. Their weapon split. Their wedges took a lot of damage as well. I think the entire right side of their robot, the front right side, there was airspace caved in a bit. Um, if they well, took so much damage against Tombstone in less than a minute when they were winning the fight, I just don't see how they could survive Tombstone here. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I, I actually agree with you, but um, like. You aren't beating Tombstone without taking a lot of damage in, yeah. in exchange, regardless of who you are. Like, unless you get like, wh- unless you yeah. get lucky, you unless get like a one hit kill, like Endgame does. Uh-huh. But, but like, Rotator took a crap load of damage when it beat Tombstone. Bite Force took a crap load of da- like you don't you don't beat Tombstone without taking a crap load of damage. However, that said, Did I do it completely. Really? What? Did Bite Force take that much damage while beating Tombstone? It took some damage. I don't know about in 2019, but in 2015, they took a lot of damage yeah, in that one. Well, well, 20, 2019, 2019, though, was, was like endgame. Like, it was like one hit, pretty much, and it was done. Yeah, that, that was fair. That's fair. But, like, but, even then, like, um, even if, yeah, you do need to take damage to beat Tombstone, definitely. Yeah. But that being said, if you, if 
you get if you take serious damage in less than one minute, you cannot survive three minutes with Tombstone. And no, yeah, but I, I which doctor was much much inferior. No, I, I agree. I'm mean, that said. I was saying, um, I, I completely agree in that which doctor would get its skull caved in by Tombstone with the ease and Tombstone would 100 percent win this fight. Sven, what do you got on this? Yeah, I'm agree. Tombstone just completely murders Witch Doctor. Um, I just don't see Witch Doctor. It's not driven as well as it was in 2019. It's not as durable as it was in 2019. It's not as reliable as it was in 2019. Like it's not as destructive either. I think 2019 was just be better in every way. And like even in 20 in the Remars, it was so close. Like Tombstone was not driven by Ray. It was not as is not in peak <coughs> form, and it was. It destroyed Witch Doctor. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think this is very close. Yeah, I... Yeah, I think... We're all going this is to... what peak performance looks like. I think we're all going Tombstone here, so this is time to say... We're going Witch Doctor, bro! <laughs> I said Tombstone. I'm trying to recognize the... This is being recorded, right? Like, this it, isn't gonna, it... like, suddenly... of the recording. Oh, oh we're gonna find out. So we gotta say goodbye to the 2016 champ. Which dog? Bye. <laughs> and now we have the episode five 2018 rematch between Yeti and Ice Wave. When this fight began, Yeti had a very aggressive start, but in the end, Yeti had some internal issues and lost this fight by KO. What do you guys have on this fight? I, I'm gonna go with Yeti. I have to go with Yeti. Even in Ice Bay versus Yeti in the um, fight night matchup, Yeti was getting the better of those hits. It was deflecting Ice Wave like five, six feet in the air. Ice Wave, I'm pretty sure Ice Wave only won that fight because Yeti just abruptly stopped working. Yeah. If it if that didn't happen, uh, because Ice Wave's wedge, I mean, sorry, uh, Yeti's wedge seems really solid. I'm pretty sure it could last um, pretty long against Ice Wave. And especially Ice Wave in 2018's round of 16 is pretty unreliable. It, it lost its weapon against Rotator in like uh, 30 seconds. So I don't see Ice Wave surviving that long against Yeti. Not to mention Yeti could just flip it over anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I am with that. Like, I, because when they fought before, like, I don't think Ice, I think Ice Wave had little to nothing to do with the fact that it won that fight. I oh, think yeah. it was just like Yeti having a technical it issue. Was, it wasn't really. It know. was just a bit of shock damage, I guess, but nothing, re not real. Yeah, and like they, I feel like they'd be more prepared for that. But yeah, Yeti's just much mm -hmm. more aggressive, and you know they're. They'd win. They'd probably win it. Like, let's be real. I have my vote to Yeti. Yeah, yeah what same. typically ends up happening with rematches is like, like for example, Valkyrie and Whiplash, Copper and Gigabyte, hey, where when they fought a second time, they um, learn from their, they learn from the mistakes that was made and how they could improve their robot for fighting that same opponent once again. And I think that. I think Yeti would figure out, like, the internal issues they were having and figure out how to avoid it from happening again. And how I think this fight would go, like, similar config- Yeti would definitely go with the same configuration. I think there's almost no doubt about that. But, yeah, yeah. I do think- I do think Ice Wave was winning the first few, except for that la except for that last hit where Ice Wave got sent, like, four to six feet in the air. But- I think what will eventually happen is we're going to see a ton of weapon-on-weapon -weapon shots, but Ice Wave will eventually get flipped over, and Yeti will win this yeah. fight that way. I don't want to address the elephant in the room, but Oblivion keeps leaving and rejoining the group, the voice chat, and it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I remember laughing at that. Uh, so yeah, I was noticing that as I was uh, <laughs> explaining my case. Spin, Spin what Doctor, what do you think about this? Um, yeah, I'm agree. Yeti aggressive. He's got a wedge. He's gonna just keep getting hits in. And I agree with Pori. I think Chris, like eventually I think Yeti's vert is just gonna flip Ice Wave. Yeti just got really like unlucky with its technical issues in their uh first in their original fight. And I think I don't think that's gonna happen again. And I think Yeti's just gonna take the win eventually. I'm gonna go with 
this one also. So now this is our 2018. Is he here? We have our 2018 finals between Tombstone and Yeti, a rematch in the 2016 semifinals. A fairly close fight, a fight that Green Square hates. So, yeah. What do you guys got on this matchup? Uh, okay, I'll go, I'll go. Yeti wins. Mic drop. Uh-oh, here we go. Okay, so hear me out. Um... Like we've mentioned before, Tombstone's frame was pretty pretty scuffed up. And I feel like Yeti is just the perfect... Because Yeti is super aggressive. Like, Sal just... Sal isn't really, like, you know, the type to just, like, be up your ass the whole fight. But Yeti is. And I feel like... And plus, Yeti 2018 is much better than Yeti 2016. And... Yeah, I, 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 know it's, I know it's a bold... What? What? You go, I'm Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, uh, I know it's a bold take, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I'm going to go Yeti on this. All right. What do you guys know what? Smile? I'm with you. I'm also going Yeti. It has a weather oh. now. It's Tombstone's not in, in good condition after this season. I mean, sure, its last two fights were probably quick and KOs. I don't think tombstone will survive this one <laughs> it's gonna t it's not gonna be as good as it was say in the minotaur fight or okay uh, i'm sorry i just got other... disconnected i'm sorry it's, about that okay. i think yeti is gonna take this eventually it's gonna take the hits it's gonna be aggressive and it's gonna just gonna maybe either it's either gonna win a close decision or just gonna take out tombstone just in the right way just by being a, i Sorry, I'm really bad at explaining this. No, I know what no, you no, mean. You're doing good. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I have to agree yeah. with Spin there. And remember, remember at this point, Tombstone is very highly damaged. Um, it's been damaged by multiple powerful robots at this point. Um, Yeti, on the other hand, had a de an easier way to the finals. It didn't face, or it wouldn't take as much damage. And even if we're just taking yeah. Yeti versus Tombstone. Eddie's wedge is, I'm pretty sure it's durable enough to take on um, Tombstone. Especially a damaged Tombstone. We could, we could, uh, what happened to Tombstone against Bombshell could very well happen against Yeti as well. I'm pretty sure Yeti could just take the hits, as Spin said, and just be aggressive, ram into Tombstone, and eventually win the fight. Either, it would either be a pretty close decision, as Spin said, or Yeti would just dominate Tombstone. Yeah. Well, here's another thing that I just thought of. Yeti fought Tombstone in 2016, and the, considering the ass nine judges decision, there was no shot of Yeti winning that fight without its been being on. Well, so, like, I, it I, doesn't, I, I mean, it still would have lost a fight in this season, but, like, I feel like, but I feel like, you know, the, the judging criteria is more in Yeti's favor this time around. It, from 2018 onwards, we saw a massive improvement in the judging criteria. Where yeah. A good amount of um, a good amount of points and preference was also given to control and aggression, which are really what Yeti excels at. Tombstone exactly. could get more damage. I mean, again, Tombstone could clip those exposed wheels. It could pay, It could do a bit of damage to Yeti. But at the end, Yeti's aggression and control and just really dominance is going to win the fight for it. Yeah. Green, what do you have got on this, since we haven't heard from you yet? Okay, so yeah, this is a rematch from what I think was one of the worst fights in 2016 that was televised. And, because yeah, like Civilian said, I was not a fan of that fight. Like, that was depressing. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was really lame. I thought it could have been a lot better than what it was, but... We got a rematch here. I think this will be a bit better than that lame 2016 fight. However, though, I'm not 100% sure who I would pick in this one. Because, on one hand, we got the stuff that Pori, Spin, and Oblivion have all mentioned. That Tombstone could be suffering from some damage from in previous fights to their one frame that they've got. And potentially other parts, too. And that could be a major concern from this one. But on the other hand... Like, yes, Yeti has taken some hits from, like, Witch Doctor, or, uh, let's see, Whiplash, 
bombshell as well. well. We're not counting but the whip last we night, so. ice. We could count ice. Wa we could count ice wave too, and what civilian said. But either way, though, we I, I don't think Yeti has gotten too big of a test as for its durability. Like Tombstone Spinner is like on a whole nother level compared to Ice Wave in terms of power. So. How well, how durable is that front that Yeti's got for horizontal spinners against a bot like Tombstone and stuff? Because like removing the forks and going to a smaller drum like didn't add exactly too much weight because I think that I think that gave them like because like I know the drum spinners like thirty to forty pounds and then the forks were like ten pounds I think like that's. That's that's a reasonable amount of defense, but you still got but it still puts questions in my mind for how durable exactly Yeti could be in this one. Corey, like, you, this would be you, this would be a this would be a very close fight in my mind, but I think I'm probably gonna pick <laughs> <laughs> Nice Corey. But yeah, I'm probably gonna but just because I can't decide between those two, I already know I'm outvoted, but I'm just gonna pick Tombstone for this one. I think Tombstone will pull it off. Yeah, my opinion Sorry, I learned about a new Discord feature. Beautiful. Is much you gotta show powerful. me that feature, Bori. <laughs> show me this feature when we're done with those podcasts. Uh, you right-click on your camera, and then you change video background. You can oh, choose whatever oh, you I didn't, I didn't realize there was virtual background in Discord. Yeah, I, I didn't either. It's apparently new. <laughs> huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, no matter the cool. fight, though, like, I have to say, um, I do agree with you. Yeti never withstood, has never been tested against spinners as powerful as Tombstone. But you do have to remember that Tombstone at this point is is gravely damaged. It has taken a lot of damage in the fight nights. Like, even in, in real life, in the bombshell fight, what really sealed... Was that Oblivion? Oblivion? Oblivion cut up. Did Oblivion cut oh. out? Oh, sorry, he's back. He's back now. I think. Or not. Oblivion, you're cutting out. Really? Yeah, I think the basically of what he was trying to say was Yeti might not have been proven in defense-wise, but Tombstone mm -hmm. has been gravely damaged. I gotta kind of say, say the same thing about that. The thing is, I think 2018 Tombstone was, in my opinion, the weakest iteration of Tombstone. And mainly because it didn't seem like it had any, like, defense, like spares of its base or frame or whatever. Yeah, he just kind of showed up. But, um, just, just, as I am explaining my point of view, I get this kind of that's in the uh, web, uh, internet. <laughs> But as I was saying, um, just to sum it up, Tombstone is pretty badly damaged at this point. I doubt they would have enough spares to properly repair themselves. While you did say that Yeti hasn't really taken too much of a test so far, in this fight that would be an advantage, okay? Because they haven't needed to change multiple parts. They aren't running low on spares like Tombstone is. So in this case, Yeti just has the better... Um, parts, it does, it's not going to be desperate for parts here, as Tombstone could be. Tombstone could definitely be much more damaged than Yeti here, and that is probably what seals Tombstone's fate as well. Yeah, I think if 2018 Tombstone went on into the, like, the 2019 or 2020 season, it would not do good whatsoever, because there's a lot more destructive bots in 2019 and 2020, there's a lot more better drivers in 2019 and 2020, and there's a lot and bots are much more durable in 2019 and 2020. So I I gotta go with Yeti on this one. So that's a four and one call for Yeti to win. So yeah, Yeti is our 2019 champion. All uh, 2018 champion. All hail Yeti, our God, our Lord, our Savior. Yeti. And shout out to Yeti. Yeti smash, yeah. <laughs> and now we go into. Legitimately, I don't even like Yeti that much, but. Wow. wow. The importer. Uh, people are going to hate me for that. Oh, we forgive you, man. It's chill. Man, I can't put up a custom background. That's a rip. Yeah, you need, oh, you need Nitro for the custom. Yep, you need Nitro for it. That's too bad. 19 bracket here is pretty as well. 
Yeah. Yeah, we're doing 2019 bracket as well. We're we're holding off on 2020 okay. until next episode, but yeah. That's fair, yeah. Do, do bracket today is fine. Yeah. Right, I so, don't know how much long I'll be able to stay, but I'll stay as long as I can. We can we can use your the bracket you sent me as tiebreakers if when when you leave. If I do have to leave. Yeah, yeah. if you do have to leave. Or if Spin has to leave as well, or anyone here. So yeah, that's fair, yeah. Now we got our 2019 bracket. We have some big up and comers. That yeah, we... uh, um, if you don't mind, please send this in the chat as well because my internet isn't good enough at the moment to see the screen share. Uh, sure, I'll do that. Okay, so we got some big up and comers here. About majority of these robots in this bracket are in fact rookies as uppercuts a rookie black dragons a rookie quantum's a rookie um hydra's a rookie uh yeah yeah there are a lot there are, there are a considerable number of first timers i mean not first timers per se but first time like could you really consider consider hydra a rookie or yeah. even specter for that or even uh, um quantum for that matter like I mean, they're rookies to battle boss, like the boss themselves are, but you have teams like Wayachi, right, and, and the team that brought us Warhead, uh, I wouldn't really call them rookies in any manner. Yeah. So, first fight, we have Uppercut versus Black Dragon. Uh, Uppercut kind of had a mad performance in its regular season, took out, uh, took out Mammoth, took out, um, breaker box and then lost to tantrum but it also beat scorpios yeah that beat scorpios i forgot i forgot his fourth fight and it was scorpios uh yeah where we got the 2019 desperado champ and one of green's favorite bots of all time black dragon green. it lost a controversial decision to texas twister which i think i i disagree with that decision completely um, I think yeah. you do too. Most of us do, to be honest. Uh, Black, Dra uh, Black Dragon has taken out Bloodsport, uh, Captain Shredderator, Warhawk, and Minotaur on its way to the bracket. So what are your guys' thoughts on this? Um, I would say the same thing for 2020 as well. Uh, Black Dragon is just the overall. It's more stable. It's better driven. It could perfectly take advantage of Uppercut's unstable gyro here. Especially since in 2019, as far as I know, it didn't really show the same amount of power as it did later on. So I don't see it getting a lucky Uta or a lucky a massive shot. Black Dragon is the perfect counter to it. It's fast, maneuverable, well-driven, and has a pretty nasty weapon as well. So this could be something similar to um, Ribot versus Uppercut. Uh, Black Dragon just absolutely outdrives Uppercut and just completely dominates it in this fight. Yeah, like, I will, yeah, what I'll probably say is, I think Black Dragon's just gonna absolutely dominate this fight, like, yeah, like, Gabriel Bertozzi, who's a driver of, uh, driver of Black Dragon for that season, I don't think I pronounced his last name right, but he, what, he proved himself to be an elite driver for Black Dragon, oh, yeah, like, definitely. like, I even, even while they were, even while they were smoking and on fire in the Texas Twister fight, which, by the way, I did disagree with that decision, too. Like, Gabriel was yeah. a great driver er, throughout there, and he provided yeah, Black Dragon with four rock-solid victories, in my opinion, even though some of them were up against, like, less reliable robots and stuff, but... But yeah, kind of like what I see happening here, I feel like Black Dragon's probably gonna go in with a similar configuration they did with Minotaur, try to win... Well, I shouldn't say exactly that, because they did use a configuration for that fight specifically for Minotaur, but one where they'll probably try to go for the ground game, too. Because, like, while yeah. they might try... While I could see them trying to, like, take advantage of Uppercut's gyro issues, Black Dragons definitely seem to have a big thing with, like, going head-on, like, just staying aggressive, going head-on, trying to get into their opponent's face, like, as quickly as possible. That's kind of, that's kind of what I've seen as being their style, throughout the past few se throughout 2019 and 2020 and i bet we'll see something like that in 2021 as well oh and i feel like they'll want to try to win the ground game here against uppercut which is definitely not an easy task but definitely okay. possible i i'm probably gonna give black dragon the edge 
as I think Black Dragon can definitely pull it off, like either clip a wheel or Uppercut potentially getting stuck, like how they did when they fought Bite Force, even though we're not technically counting that match. But you get the idea. So my vote's okay, Black Dragon. Oh, like if Black Dragon if got Gabriel Godowski and Outdrive. Oh yeah, that's right. It did get five wins. Black Dragon beat Scorpios. I think that was after yeah, the season ended. It was after the season. It was still a good win. Um, yeah, 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 it, yeah, it was. Yeah, he can, he can 100% outdrive Uppercut here. Including Zach Lytle was actually talking in the, in one of Scorpio's most recent videos that they were actually originally supposed to fight Bloodsport for that untelevised battle, oh, and oh. so they came out with, and so they actually came out with a configuration, a weapon for horizontal spinners, and then they learned they were going to be fighting Black like Dragon, and too late to where they couldn't really change. I think. That's such a. Yeah. I'm not 100 sure of there. this, but I did hear that they went like all out. They got their heaviest weapon, so that's why they kept um, wheeling so much against Black Dragon. But that being said, even if it didn't really, I would still put my money on put my money on uh, Black Dragon to win that fight. Um, again, it's even especially. I'm pretty sure it's the weapon is more reliable in 2019. I'm not sure, but I don't think it died as much as it did in later seasons. So, uh, yeah, definitely Black Dragon here. Uh, Corey, Spin, what do you guys have got on this? Because we haven't heard from you two yet. Spin, you go first. <laughs> Spin, okay. just speak over. Um, I think I'm going to go with Black Dragon too. It's driven really well. It's really speedy. And I do think they're driven well enough to take advantage of Uppercut's gyro. Like, they're zippy. Uppercut's trying to um, adjust to that. And I think that's where Black Dragon will take advantage. And... I think it'll just gonna snip at the wheels or just get under and just knock it about. And I'm gonna go Black Dragon. And I will say I also disagree with the Black Dragon Texas Twister outcome, but I do think it's a little closer than you guys are giving credit for. Yeah, on the contrary, I I do not like I disagree with Black Dragon Texas Twister, but on the contrary, I do agree with Black Dragon versus Kraken. Which is also a pretty controversial. I agreed with. I agreed yep, with. That I, I agreed with the call just, too on that one, but I, I can agree. see the argument for why you disagree I, I with Black Dragon and Kraken. Coming from, but I just saw. Yeah. I disagree with that decision. <laughs> Corey, what do you got on this fight since we haven't? Oh yeah, robot. Um. Okay, so too busy having Master Chief I, as your background camera. I see. What? I'm I'm trying to liven up the mood. All right. Um. So, in my opinion, I feel like um, Black Dragon would probably win this because Uppercut, while it had some very good moments, it wasn't quite there yet. It was just kind of like, like it, it got some good hits on Mammy. It got some good hits on Breaker Box, but like, and and, and even Scorpios, but like. It wasn't the killing machine it was in 2020 yet. Yeah. Meanwhile, Black Dragon already was pretty well established, being like you know an excellent driver, and you know they had a good hard hitting weapon. I mean, uppercut weapon probably hits harder, but like yeah. also uppercut has the gyro, which I feel that Black Dragon would take advantage of. So I'm gonna definitely go Black Dragon on this. I think the only advantage that uppercut really has it here is its weapon i do think even though it's it's, it's it's spinner isn't as good as it was in 2020 i still think it's just a bit more better than black dragons but not by much because we it, saw it black dragon probably. we saw black dragon do some crazy stuff like what it did to captain shredderator and blood sport so i i wouldn't say it's that far uh, that far of a margin but i still think uppercut has like the slightly better weapon but yeah, Black Dragon. But I have like even if Uppercut does, I mean Uppercut probably is still more powerful than Black Dragon. But if you can't get a solid hit with the weapon, it doesn't yeah. matter either way. Yeah. Um, or you should put. Or you should put up my shit post of civilian yeah. arc next. I just did. That's the last one. He just one. did. <laughs> no, no, my shit post of civilian arc. That oh, wasn't. The, 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 that wasn't mine. The behemoth area. I don't have post. yours. It's on Instagram. Well, I get, it doesn't require me downloading it. I'm doing a podcast right now, Green. <laughs> lame. You, you I'm already like getting distracted. Lame, Green, People are probably going to dislike this, but 
I do think Uppercut is also slightly overrated in the current season. Yes, thank um, you. Don't no, get me wrong. It's thank you, immensely you. powerful. Okay, it's it's stupidly overpowered of a weapon. But other than that, uh, there's nothing really other than the weapon that Uppercut really excels at. It's not too well driven. It's it's pretty well driven, but it's not um, exceptionally driven. Yeah. It's not exceptionally fast or maneuverable. Um, in fact, most of the fights if you take um, Uppercut versus Sawblaze even. The rematch, I would say Sawblaze would win that fight oh, yeah. simply because, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, I don't want to go into much more detail now because of time and stuff, but Uppercut is, is definitely slightly overrated in 2020 and 2021 by extension. So even, even in 2020, I would still vote Black Dragon to beat Uppercut. Oh, I would too. Definitely. I honestly think the opposite. I actually think Uppercut is underrated, in my opinion. Because, like, really, they're one... Because, like, Alex Satori does a good job driving it, in my opinion. Like, yeah, like even, 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 with, even with all the drive, it, even with all the gyroing Uppercut definitely has and stuff. Like, Alex Satori does a really solid job driving that robot. And there's a few methods that I can think of for how he could reduce the gyroing issues or cut it all the way down to, like, I zero think, and stuff. Like which, but... But yeah, I don't. I don't think they're like probably going to do that. Do any of the methods that I'm that I can think of, at least for weight reasons. But there are definitely ways they could cut down the gyroing issues. And then Uppercut's a really solid robot. Like, like they got they got a very powerful spinner with a lot of physics behind it in order to get the most power they possibly can out of it. And yeah, that's kind of my take on it. I do think Uppercut's underrated. And stuff, it's but of course, other people would think the opposite, which I completely respect. See, uh, like Alex is totally yeah, I think it's it's regular, regular. but when you, when you, for example, take like um, the driver of Bronco. I think Reason drives Bronco. I'm not sure. But yes, Reason drives yeah, Bronco. Reason. Uh, so when you have a when you have a bot like Bronco that it is that's so long and oversteers so much, and you see how well it usually does. You can also credit a reason for that. Like, it's the same thing with Alex Satori. Like, they're pretty good drivers to manage the bots they have. But since we haven't seen them drive other robots, we really don't know how good they can be. Uh, all right, so moving on to the next fight, we got Quantum versus Huge. Quantum, who had kind of a met two and two. It took out Blacksmith, took out the... Most annoying bot in robot combat history in Duck, which I'm, <laughs> which I'm proud of. Thank you, Quantum. You're a G. Um, and you're such a hate boner, dude. Sh shut up, Lori. Uh, I love Duck. Come on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Quantum, clacks, dude. But Quantum lost to uh, Death Roll and Lockjaw. Went into the win in your end thing and took out Valkyrie. Uh, huge. Um, Fuck, what did Huge do? It lost to Son of Wayachi. <laughs> beat yeah, it started off with a loss to Son of Wayachi. Then it beat, then it beat, beat, beat Jasper. Then it beat Jasper. It beat the Business or Pleasure Bot. It also beat Broncos. Pori, Pori, Huge yeah. beat the Business or Pleasure Bot. Yeah, it beat the Business... Well, it used Pleasure in that fight and it lost. That's yeah, why. Used, it used Pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Add memories of Huge beating Bronco as well. Yeah, huge beat Bronco. Whooped, it, whooped its ass. That was a fun fight, man. Mm. Uh, nice. <laughs> if only Bronco was more aggressive, it would have won their fight. Yeah, that's, a, that's Bronco's problem a lot of the time. They just... They, they, they're, like, they're, they're too... Uh, and this, this dates back to the Comedy Central era, even. Like, they, they're, they're very... They're kind of yeah, like... Definitely, like... Toro versus the Revolutionist or Shredderate, I don't know what it was called. There. Frisbee was Ultimate. A, Frisbee Ultimate. Ah, Frisbee Ultimate. That was such a bad fight. Yeah, like, if there's, like, a remotely dangerous spinner, they're, like, super scared of it, and that sometimes hurts them. Like, Frisbee Ultimate, that could have... I mean, even at the end of the fight, they flipped it. Yeah, at the end of the fight, right in there, it was winning the fight. It stopped the spinner. It was getting flips. But by that time, it was already too late. Yeah, um, and exactly. And it was the opposite. At the beginning of Bronco was huge. Bronco was pretty aggressive. Got some, after got some good losing its, After Bronco lost its like top armor panels and stuff, then it was just circling around huge, trying to get into the wheels, which it couldn't do by the end. That's probably what lost Bronco the fight. Yeah, I so, agree. So what are your guys' thoughts on Quantum yeah. versus Huge? Uh, um, 
one thing about Quantum is it's a pretty fragile go first, robot. Absolutely. I would say Quantum is a decently fragile robot. It's not like super not durable, but it hasn't shown to be durable. It's lost, um, it's lost drive against some not so hard hitters like Lockjaw, and even I wouldn't say massive hits, but decent hits from Death Roll. Um, especially at, especially the top part. I think the, the hydraulics are exposed on top as well. Um, Quantum could hundred percent win this fight. Don't get me wrong. If it's aggressive, if it controls the fight really well, it could also come up with some sort of extension that could you know get a jam, get huge jammed up. But as it stands, I I would say huge wins this fight just based off of damage alone. All right, uh, Tori, what do you got? Yeah, I'm gonna agree. I. Uh, I go. Um, there you go. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, you so I think uh, he just. I think he's just gonna take this. Quantum is not very durable. Like just a couple hits from Lockjaw, like took it out, and then also, um, see, I don't know how well Quantum can actually take advantage of Huge if it gets a bite. Quant, like, like look at Kraken versus Huge. It was like Huge, like whole almost the whole time except for the first thirty seconds, and even in that thirty seconds. Kraken was not really doing much other than grappling. And, like, uh, Kraken has, like, a better drivetrain. And, like, the way the bot is shaped, it's better, like, just, like, it's better for yeah. moving huge than quantum. I mean, is. yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's because yeah, it has yeah. its wheels at the very back. In spite of being tipped over, it could still push huge yeah. around. But quantum, I don't think, I don't think yeah. it could really push around huge if it does get a bite. Because huge is so tall. If it does somehow get a bite on huge, it would be dangling above the floor. It couldn't really push it anyway, so. Team Robo Challenge. If you're what team Robo Challenge. Oh, sorry. All right. Go ahead. All right. Team Robo Challenge. If you're watching this video, you should comment below. How would you prepare for a bot like Huge and stuff? What would your game plan be for this fight? I personally am very curious about how Quantum would prepare if they ever got paired up against a robot like Huge. Like, would they come with like an extent with like some sort of configuration for Huge, similar to, like what Hydra and Bronco and Kraken all did, where they came out with a part that they added to their robot for this, or would Quantum simply simply like try to win it with good driving, like try to get to the sides, maybe see if maybe they can bite at the wheels and chip it apart piece by piece, just maybe take a, yeah like take off some chunks of the wheels since their crusher can probably get through the polyethylene, which I think would be, although I think that would be a very hard task to do, but. Uh, Actually, just, huge, fact, just the fact, just the fact that I don't, th just the fact that I don't think Quantum's gonna be able to do that very easily. Like, I think Huge is gonna absolutely dominate this fight, and I think they're gonna win this fight by I'm gonna uh, by knockout. I'm gonna guess in a minute and a half. Axelot will be one thing just occurred to my mind: if Huge goes with the uh, solid pick wheels, there isn't even anything Quantum can grab, even if it does get to the side, because it would just hit a flat wall. It really could not pierce through anyway. Not exactly, because don't forget that Quantum's got a wedge up front. Like yeah, if they Quantum charge into huge, huge's yeah, huge huge wheel will be an huge huge's wheel will be at an angle, and so Quantum will be able to bite into the wheels. Like they won't I mean, get, they probably won't get very far to where they'd be able to take a chunk off, like what I've been saying and stuff. But they would be able to do some. Da they would be able to do a little bit of damage that way. Yeah. Maybe. So. Quantum Excellent. could actually attach something to its self writer. It could, like imagine, imagine uh, the bike rack, but it can also lift huge. That would be a legitimately cool thing to watch, honestly. Yeah, I think that is what Hydra was originally intending on coming with was a bike rack that was able to get underneath like the side like rods that huge has where they'd be able to trigger their flipper and send huge into the air but they supposedly ran out of time for that all right I think back to I back to pori pori you've been dying to say Hi. something <laughs> He's Hi. Um, this entire time yeah, I was like, hey, I'll go first, then everybody else went instead. But, uh, hey, hi. hey, hey, uh, hey hold Corey. on, let me go first, let me go next, let me go next for you. All right, all right. All right, so, um, I actually have an idea for what I think Quantum will go for, 
I think we'll actually go for a defender approach on this one, where Quantum's front will be lifted upwards, and Quant so Quantum's teeth and wedge will be able to fit into Huge's base frame. I think that's what Quantum might try to do. I don't think it know if that's right or not. Probably not, but that's just my take on it. Uh, Pori, Axolotl, Beanie Man, what do you have? Um, hi, I'm Pori. I'm 32 years old. I'm, I'm trying to talk on a podcast. Um, <laughs> huge, huge would, huge would fucking destroy Quantum. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're all agreed that huge is gonna yeah, kick ass. Uh, this is probably the worst matchup for Quantum in the entire um, bracket. Yeah. yeah. Fair, huge is always the worst matchup you could get. Actually, I'd say Black Dragon is the worst matchup in my opinion. At least Quantum against Black, Black Dragon. Dragon, Quantum can do something. Okay, at least get a bite on. Quantum could at least yeah. get a bite on Black Dragon mm. as a thing, it's compared so to awesome. Huge, where it's very difficult it's to get a bite plausible. on them. It's not plausible, but it's possible for Quantum to get a good bite on Black Dragon and pierce right through. I think past it's Huge, I think the next worst possible opponent for Quantum would be Son of Waiachi. They could do, they could do uh, Son of Waiachi. Spectre kicked the shit out of like a Chinese ripoff Son of Waiachi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Spectre yeah. did pretty well against a Chinese, a Doraemon, I think it's called. I think. No, not not Doraemon. It was like it was a season one robot that like pretty much was an exact clone of Sal. But I think I've seen. It. I don't yeah, remember its name. About a half. Season. I don't, I, and I don't remember any of their names. Is, and, and 2019 against Son of Waiachi is not the most reliable robot. Um, Quantum would probably be set up. Why, why are we talking about matches that aren't even going to happen right. in the bracket? Next matchup, and before anyone says anything, I'm going to give out the first vote so Pori can vote the same vote as me. Next up is Blacksmith versus Son of Waiachi. Blacksmith went 2-2 two and two in regular season. It lost to Quantum, beat Kraken, uh, lost to Sawblaze, yeah. beat Shredderator. Took out Rotator in a, for some reason, controversial decision. I have no idea why. I thought Blacksmith won that, but okay. How was that fight controversial? Like, Rotator lost drive so early in that match. In the sense, it wasn't controversial in the sense that it was a close fight. It was, it was not close. Think, it was think, not close people, at all. I think people Damn, thought that the judges were It was just a surprise. I think people, people thought the judges were going to fight that Rotator Smith. didn't make it in. Especially since Blacksmith was just essentially a gimme uh, win for Rotator when the producer decided to fight. Um, people weren't, I don't think it was a controversial fight. It was more of people were just, um, caught off guard by the decision. Even Al Kindle, even Al Kindle was caught off, was caught off guard by the decision. He's so, like, oh my god, I want a judge's decision. He's like, this? what? <laughs> he fed, like, the expression on his face was, it was, it just described what he was feeling at the moment, because... Oh, he, he, Al when he was standing there next to Farouk, he was 100% thinking in his head, like, well, I lost another one, whatever. Yeah, and he was like, did I actually win a fight? Oh my, and, and, and then it gets destroyed by Witch Doctor in the next fight. I want to fight to a spinner? What? Oh, Spin found it. Spin found China. Blacksmith finally doing well, then getting destroyed by Witch Doctor in the very next round was so sad, honestly. Yeah, that thing. All right, so... Yo, sh shout out to their drip with with that those block, those, like, yeah, I do block this. windbreakers or whatever. Yeah. Like, those guys got drip straight up. You should share this on your screen. I mean, to be I, I fair, it. to be fair, like, Whirlwind has nothing on Sal. I don't know why, like, it looks the same uh, shot. I mean, they, they, hear, hear me out, hear me out, Oblivion. They got way more drip than the Waiachi team. Waiachi team got, like, generic, like, racing uniform, sort of. But, like, these guys, they're, like, they got drip. Straight How up. How dare you insult Team Waiachi? I will come and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what I like Team Waiachi. I'm just saying that this Chinese team has more drip than some, than Team Waiachi does because right. it's not. It's a compliment towards the the, the other team. It, you know, they're just it's, yeah. I mean, I guess run, that's fair. they're busting. You know, they're just that's just how it is. But um, and Black yeah, I think I'm gonna vote on this fight. Yeah, I'm gonna vote first. I'm gonna vote first. I, have to go I haven't yeah. even Corey, introduced. I haven't even introduced Sal yet. Holy shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> and this here, one, do we really need an introduction? And we, yes, we do. Uh, here we got um, Son of Waiachi, who lost to No Apologies in Season 4 of BattleBots, which is why I'm going to go for Blacksmith to win this fight by judge's decision. Uh, what do you guys got? Yeah, um, yeah. Oblivion. Uh, it's my turn. Oh, Pori, okay, go ahead. Pori, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, anyways, um, I feel like Blacksmith is definitely going to win this, and anybody who disagrees with me is uh, wrong. <laughs> but just because Blacksmith is so durable, Son of Waiachi can't self fight. It'd be like a harder version of the Shredderator fight, pretty much. You scared him away, right. Tori. So at first, I, at first, I was thinking this was going to be a hot take, but it's not. It's not a hot take since I'm technically agreeing with Civilian Pori here because I also think Blacksmith would win this fight. Like, I personally mm. think like. So, like, Son of Waiachi doesn't spin up as fast as Captain Shredderator, but they definitely are more capable of landing bigger hits than Captain Shredderator is. But Blacksmith has proven that they could take hits like that. The one big question that I've got here that actually could, like, could flip my prediction if this happened to be the case, if this happened to be the case in real life, but is Son of Waiachi's spinner high enough to where it could hit the blacksmith's weapon area, similar like what Rotator did, which disabled Blacksmith's oh. hammer for the rest of the fight. And I'm guessing right now, no to that. And what how I'm thinking this fight is going to go is Blacksmith will come in with that steel, with that really, with that steel front that they used in the fight with Captain Shredderator <laughs> and Rotator. So, I and I think they'll box rush Son of Waiachi with that get them in the corner, and then just pulverize them with that hammer as many times as possible. Like, Son of Waiachi will definitely own the damage area in terms of these two, because Blacksmith's hammer has proven to not be that powerful, unless the Son of Waiachi spinner happens to break, like what it did in the Whiplash fight, because right before Whiplash got Son of Waiachi over, or the motors and Son of Waiachi's weapon area were overheating eventually, and... I, that could be the case. That could be the potential case if these two happen to meet and stuff. And I think, but I think Blacksmith yeah. will definitely take a control, work with the aggression and control area, the judging criteria, and win the fight that way. If these two were to ever meet, I have a, I have a I have a thing to add on to that. Green, um, look at this picture behind me. Try to tell me that these guys ain't got drip. Come on oh now. God. That's <laughs> rad. Look, I, I just want it. you to admit. I just want you to admit that these guys got got some some sick outfits going on. I focus the camera. It's all on I want. It, it just four. It just one. It just four colored squares. Like, Personally, though, I'm a bigger fan of the Waiachi uniforms. Know, but you're Wyachi's... but but you're definitely right about that, Pori. Like you're Bro, not color wrong about that. Color block is the future, man. <laughs> if I wasn't already the... using the, doing the flannel aesthetic, I'd be all over the color block. The topic oh, yeah. of Blacksmith versus Son of Waiachi, I do have this side of Blacksmith. Don't get, I, I love Son of Waiachi, okay? I really do. But Blacksmith is the perfect counter to Son of Waiachi yet again. It's, I mean, we saw it fight against Shredderator. It's pretty fast. It's hella durable. Um, it can just box your Son of Waiachi, just take the hits. Uh, Son of Waiachi will definitely eventually burn out. Um, like he did against Whiplash, like he did against uh, Sawblaze by the end. Um, well, Blacksmith except that was mostly that was mostly because Sawblaze split the rods, which caused their full body spinner to become unbalanced, and that's what caused Wait, the true, weapon fire. Man. True, true. But we saw that against Whiplash as well. The, the uh, spinner didn't physically get damaged, um, not much at least. But the motor just burnt out and quit. It's always been a problem with Son of Waiachi. It probably always will be. Blacksmith can just absolutely dominate this fight based on control. At least, like, Shredderator, the way Sh Shredderator hits, it does get a hit. It doesn't completely stop. But Son of Waiachi would definitely slow down a lot more when, when it gets a hit in. And just Blacksmith would be, would be able to absolutely control this fight. It would push Son of Waiachi all around into the screws, into the pulverizer, um, I don't, I don't think it could flip it over like it did against Shredderator, but it could definitely win just based on control, aggression, and win a JD. Spin Doctor, what do you got on this? 
you know, I'm also going to say blacksmith. It's tanky. It's durable. It's got a really good wedge. I think what's going to happen is it's going to go in from the box rush like everyone else said, and it's just going to be control. It's going to use its hammer. I think this is a case where a blacksmith's hammer might actually be able to do damage if it hits the right spot enough. <laughs> and I just think it's going to be blacksmith I mean, hands down. Even if, like, say, they were to separate, I still think blacksmith is get back in there and even if it goes to just a decision, I don't think Sal's gonna be gonna do enough to actually do to earn enough points to even take it to a split decision. I think it's just blacksmith hands down. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Definitely. we got a unanimous choice for blacksmith. I was surprised. I was gonna go for. I was going for blacksmith. I yeah, I thought we were gonna blacksmith. argue this honestly. Yeah. Now I, I'm gonna I, argue I know, with this one. This is a pretty clear cut fight, honestly. Like, there's nothing Son of Wayati can do to to blacksmith. Now I'm gonna um, just argue because of how much of a break it is. Now I'm gonna argue hard in the next one, okay? So next up we Oh, got... we are gonna have to I argue die on anyway. the Yeti Hill. Hydra versus Yeti, my goodness. Next up we got Hydra versus Yeti. Hydra a four and robot. Taking out bots like free shipping, Warhawk, Petunia, and Bunko. Okay. And then we have Yeti who lost first fight to the three time champion Bite Force, so no chance shame there. And it took out free shipping, Rainbow, and the 2023 champion Tantrum. Yeti took, Yeti, Yeti took you out, civilian? What? Yeti took you out? Oh, wait, what? What were you meaning by that? The 2023 champion. Yeti took out the 2023 champion. It took out Tantrum, man. Yeah, he said 2023 champion, not the favela. <laughs> You, you, neither of you got, neither of you got the joke that I was oh, going. Fuck. Were you doing a civilian is in, civilian is in the rainbow square. He said, uh, yeah, he took out rainbow. Oh, okay. I see it now. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah. What do you guys uh, thoughts yeah. on this? This is gonna be a pretty straightforward uh, one I don't see Hydra doing much. Okay, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna count it out. I'm gonna count it out. I'm gonna count it out. So... Let me, finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Okay, okay, you go then. Let me because you, you go then all. See, Yeti, see, Yeti, um, it's also a really durable robot, okay? Hydra is not going to beat, especially 2019 Hydra, is not going to beat Yeti just by flipping it. And Hydra, again, in 2019, is just not good enough of a robot. It's not durable enough um, to just get in there and continuously beat and flip over Yeti. Eventually, Yeti is um, going to get to Hydra's side, get to his back, and do a, a real, a real bad amount, a really high amount of damage. At least 2020 Hydra had better armor in that regard. We saw what happened when Minotaur got um, to Hydra's side. It was over in like five seconds of a hit. Uh, Yeti is not as powerful as Minotaur, but it should be able to get underneath Hydra because Hydra 2020 was like Hydra 2019 was super, super high. It got outwedged by free shipping, Petunia, Warhawk. Okay, the only robot that did not outwedge Getty, it, ironically, was Getty stopped using Bronco. its forks after the Bronco after the Bite Force fight, so it would not, so it can't it's get true, under but Hydra. Doesn't need the forks. You're not going to beat need, Hydra. Exactly. It doesn't need the forks either way. It, it's just going to go on top and just cleave off yeah, Hydra's top armor. Yeah, could Getty has Getty has going to go right over. It's going to do a, a lot of damage to yeah. Hydra here. Hydra just can't counter. No, no, no. In okay. Twenty. I would go with Hydra Shar, but 2019 is just not good enough for a robot. Uh, uh, okay, here's my take. Okay, I th think Yeti has zero control over itself, and that's why I think Hydra will win. Yeti cannot ca like go after a single shot on Hydra. It'll Hydra will just constantly get under it and have a big ass flip go on it. It's and JQ regardless of its reliability, JQ is a solid fucking driver. No, and, not, so, in yeah, not in 2019. Not in 2019. It was a solid driver at that time. Maybe not the 2020 expect, standards, 2020 but it was still like... is, in my opinion, the top top five in BattleBots in 2020. 2019, he didn't show anything. In fact, he was whiffing a lot of shots. He was being dominated again by by free shipping. He was getting out wedged. By yeah, but so against... yet, yet he was getting out wedged by everyone as well. So yeah, yeah, let, let's hear let's hear civilian arc out on this one. Yeah. Here, okay, let's let's at least hear let's at least hear what civilian has to say before we yeah, get to the yeah. arguing. Yeah. Yeah. So here's how here's how I see this fight going. I see Hydra starting out on top, getting a big flip on Yeti, 
throwing it on its side, and then Hydra will just dominate from there. Because if Yeti gets on its side, it's pretty much Hydra's fight to win. Because Hydra Yeti can't even control itself at that point, because it has to find a way to get itself back on upside down or right side up. And if and that's going to be very tough for Yeti to do with a fucking with debatably the best flipper at that time going against it. It's not like Jake Eward's going to let Yeti just go back on its wheels. No, it's going to be aggressive. It's going to throw Yeti around. And I think Hydra will win on an Uda. Uh, okay, so... I can see that. Like, I get what Civilian is saying. I can't see that happening as well. Um, I just let other people would too, so... Yeah. Okay, so, first off, I want to say I'm shocked that... That civilian arc, the Yeti simp is voting for Hydra, and that Oblivion, the the Flipper simp, is voting for Yeti. Let me just say that first and foremost. I'm very surprised at that. <laughs> uh, for branching out. Uh, but anyways, uh, Hydra's armor is like paper in this season, and even if it does get some flips, which it will, I feel like it gets hit the wrong way by that spinner, and it's done. Because, I mean, they, look how fast the Minotaur took it out. Like, all Yeti needs to do is get a few hits on him, and then it should be good. So I'm going to go Yeti. Also, I feel like Yeti Team Yeti has slightly better drip than Team Hachi. They, got the, they keep it minimalistic with the, with the basic work shirts, you know? Greenspan, what do you guys got? Like? I'm going to say spin. Yeti. Uh, although it's unstable, it's gonna like f- try flip around stuff. Yeti's gonna control. It. I mean, Hydra's gonna control Yeti, but I think Yeti's aggression. It's just gonna keep on going. It's gonna keep on going. It may get ooted, but like I mean, it, if it, it, it can be, it can get ooted. But like, what I think it's gonna happen is just gonna get flipped around, and eventually one of those flips is gonna help out Yeti. Yeti's gonna go in for the attack, and that's gonna do some damage. I think that's gonna happen again and again until the damage just builds up on Hydra, and Yeti just eventually takes it. Alright, so my opinion on this, I think Hydra is going to need a relatively quick knockout in order to win this fight. But, however though, like, I don't think it's going to be as quick as like what Pori and I think Oblivion as well have been stating as well. Because, like, Hydra's front has proven it can take, it can take a punch or two, because like, it did take quite a few shots from Warhawk's vertical spinner, and they were still driving perfectly and stuff, but... Yeah, in my opinion, like, in terms of configuration, there's no doubt Yeti's just going to go with the drum spinner. Like, in multiple seasons, Greg Gibson has expressed dislike for those forks. And and so I think he's just going to go in with the drum spinner and just go all in for this fight. So how I feel like this is probably going to go down, like, Greg Gibson is a good driver, don't get me wrong on this. But with his driving style, I don't think he's going to get to the backside or the sides of Hydra very easily. Because Jake Ewer is a really good driver. There is no doubt about that. But what I do wonder, because well, how I feel this is going to go is, yeah, he's going to charge in there. Like, like get get a hit like on the top of Hydra, but then going to get flipped up into the air and stuff in the process. And the question is, can Yeti manage to stay in the arena? Because I think that's their big hope of winning in this one. Just continuing to charge at Hydra with that drum spinner, even if they end up getting flipped a time again, a time and again. And so, yeah, I feel like what's going to eventually happen is the damage that Yeti's going to do is going to be eventually be too much, similar to like what Spin Doctor, Spin Doctor was saying right there. And I think Yeti's going to win this fight by a knockout. But I'm going to bet it's going to be a, by a knockout in two minutes. That's what I'm going to say. All right. Well, the 2018 champ moves on with a 4-1 to decision. All right. Um, uh, and here we have our final four. We got Black Dragon, a huge blacksmith, and Yeti. Uh, so, yeah. Let's start off with the left side. We got Black Dragon versus Yeti. I mean, Black Dragon versus Huge. What is your guys' Wow, opinion? foreshadowing. Uh, I would love what? to see a Black Dragon versus Yeti fight, to be honest. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be a fun Pori and Green rivalry, yeah, since green, I have Black green Dragon green. on my fancy team and Yeti, and Yeti's on Pori's team. And yeah. I could see that going either way, to be honest. That'd be a good fight, yeah. Oh, yes, it would be rad. What are your guys' but, thoughts yeah, on Black back Dragon to this. versus Huge? I'll probably start with I'll start with this one and 
I feel like some of you guys are going to disagree with me on this, but I'm actually going to, I am going to pick Black Dragon for this one, to be honest. Like, here's what, oh, yeah, because I, I was talking to, I did talk, here, before you guys oh, interrupt Black me Dragon here, I talked to, I, I talked to, a Felipe, I've talked to Felipe Durante a few times, who's one of their team members from the 2019 season, and I believe he's on the team for the 2021 season too. He missed the 2020 season. I believe due to uh, studying abroad, as the team is the team is also involved with some big engineering projects at their university that they're at, which I believe he was involved in, and which is I believe one of the reasons why some of their team members miss a few seasons and so on. But Black Dragon's strategy for this one is probably going to be coming with a flamethrower, try to torch the wheels as well as take bites out of the wheel, out, out of bits of the wheels. Similar to like what Hypershock was doing, because like before Hypershock's weapon got like got stopped by their own rake, uh, Hypershock was dishing out some pretty big hits on Huge's wheels, and they did take out, they did deliver some major cracks and took out a bunch of pieces of the wheels. And I feel like that's going to be Black Dragon's strategy with this one, while also taking a bunch of hits from that vertical spinner. But I think Black Dragon has the durability to where they can take those hits. I think Black Dragon won't do as much damage as what I'm stating right here. So I think Huge would win the damage category. Because I almost guarantee this fight would go to the judge's decision if these two fought. But I think Black Dragon will win it on a control and aggression and get a small amount of damage. But not a lot. Huge is a lot more capable of doing damage between these two compared to Black Dragon in a matchup like this. So I think Black Dragon is going to win it by a judge's decision. A very close one too. Um, irrelevant point, but, um, did Black Dragon use its flamethrower after it self-destructed in the Texas Twister fight? Uh, so. I don't think we ever saw it used, but I think they did include it for a fight or two. Ooh, I, I'm pretty that... sure it was there for the Bloodsport fight, but we never really saw it used following that. But Well, the Bloodsport fight was their first fight, I'm pretty sure. Was it? Uh, I'm, sure. I'm pretty sure. So I think they aired them the opposite way, but I'm pretty sure that was uh, their first matchups because cause Bloodsport's first matchup that aired was versus Lucky, and I know for a fact that was Lucky's second fight because Lucky had that r embarrassing rumble uh, beforehand. Um, but yeah, I kind of think that its flamethrower wasn't functional after it blew up in the Texas Twister match, and. I feel like that's like the only hope they really have. That's the same reason why I want to see Gruff fight. I don't think a would do damage. I do too much damage either yeah. way to huge. A huge against polyethylene is against polyethylene. Huge. Sorry, did not mean to interrupt you. Believe me, polyethylene is vulnerable to flame. That's what I it mean. Was, like, it was when they bought like, free shipping. Like and chomp and chomp chomp did a lot of like, yep chomp too. And that's why I really want to see a huge fight Gruff next season, because I want to see if Gruff can actually, like, melt the wheels, because if any flames are can it's them. Probably. I'd rather see a huge shipping rematch. For me, at least, I think Huge would win this fight. You can be aggressive against Huge, Char, but Huge's spinner is more than powerful enough to do some serious damage. Like, Black Dragon is a brick, don't get me wrong, but Huge can still do a lot of cosmetic damage all around Black Dragon, and Black Dragon really doesn't have anything that I know of to counter huge. It can drive into huge spare, try to, try to break it or something, but Whiplash tried to do the same thing. It did do the same thing, but it took a lot of damage in the process. It lost wheels. Um, huge took off the wheel of Hypershock as well. And you were, you were taking Hypershock as an example, that's fine, but you have to re remember that huge did end up winning that fight. And the same thing would happen here. I don't know if Black Dragon does clip the wheel and get a good a, a couple of good hits on huge. Huge would just keep on coming and keep on coming and just do some a, a lot of damage to Black Dragon in general. Black Dragon Spinner would probably eventually stop as well. And I, it would be a close fight. It could be controversial. But I do have to go with Huge. Uh, side note, I don't think I don't see Huge taking out Black Dragon's wheels. Removing those Brazil wheels is really hard. I, I don't... Has a Brazil gonna, wheel been ripped off yet this season? It's yeah. not going to remove the wheels, but it can do damage to the wheels. Brazilian I guess. Yeah. Breaking, I don't but just disagree that I think they'll stop Black Dragon's weapon, because like, Black Dragon's weapon is a far more reliable than Hypershock's vertical spinner, and many of the other weapons in against, Battle Box do. Black Dragon's weapon stopped against Texas Twister. It, yeah. Well, Black they, they shut down the weapon due to, due to their, their due to the weapon fire 
and it's stuff. Sure, but Zag Dragon's that. weapon has shown not to be very reliable, especially in 2020. But even in 2019, well, I mean, like even against Logjaw, I'm pretty sure the weapon wasn't consistently up to speed. Yeah. Um, I feel like I would... Because on one hand, I feel like Black Dragon's only shot really is just to have flames, which I don't think it would have at this point. So I feel like... Hear me out. Black Dragon wins in the drip department. 100%. They have way better you know, uniforms than Team Huge does. Like They got those very nice uh, jerseys with the big dragon on. Like It's very... If there was a Battle Bots fashion show, Black Dragon would be in like, would get like fifth place. But I feel like Huge is going to win this fight. All right. So, Spin, what do you got on this fight? I'm also going to say Huge. Um, it's put up really good fights against some really good drivers like Whiplash and Bite Force. It did lose both fights, but against Bite Force, it was just controlling the whole time. Against Whiplash, it was incredibly close. Yeah. And like. Black uh, Black Dragon doesn't have the driving advantage Paul Ventimiglia has. Black Dragon doesn't have the lifter way Whiplash has. All it has is this wide wedge and it's and it's um, drum spinner. And I'm not sure how well it would hold up in a weapon weapon contact. Huge is just really reliable in terms of weapon and stuff. So I don't think they have a chance of taking it out. They're really on, their only real chance is just hoping that they can do something against the tires in which it's the tires are really durable you know not many verts have done that well against it like have not like fully chipped at it like to the point where it's losing like the fight because of it well hypershock i think did something but um sorry <laughs> so i think he just is just gonna it's just over time. I think the damage on Black Dragons build up, and Huge just takes a decision. Sorry. Um. My opinion in this, I don't really think this will. This will be probably a pretty close decision, but I'm gonna go for Huge in this one just because I think the damage will stack up and just fade. And I don't think Black Dragon will get that much control points as, like, say, Whiplash did in both decisions. So I'm gonna go for Huge in this one. Like, Black Dragon doesn't have a reliable way to, to control Huge. It can ram into it with its wedge and stuff, but it could just deflect Huge away. That's not going to really count as much control in Black Dragon's category. Alright, so next fight uh, is Blacksmith versus the 2018 champ, Yeti. Didn't Huge win? Yay, Black Dragon won, won even with right. one vote. My, wow, my, my dude's really yeah, mad. Wow. I'm in a mind fuck. You betrayed us. I'm in a mind fuck right now. Wow. So, right, so what, did I vote for Huge to make it to the finals as well? Yes. I think so. Yeah, you did. Uh -huh. Alright, so we got Blacksmith versus Yeti, and I don't care what anyone says, but I think Blacksmith will win this. Sue me. Really? Is it, can you explain uh, your reason? Yes, I, I can and I shall. As I said in the you know movie, what I, you know what I have to I have to agree with civilian here. Let's go. There you go. There you go. Blacksmith's flat front would perfectly deflect Yeti. I don't see Yeti getting in any bite on Blacksmith's flat flat front face. It's forks. If it goes with the forks, it should also be able to just lift it up. And Blacksmith's hammer it doesn't do much damage per se, but it does put on a good show for aggression. And it will gain damage points regardless. Yeti with the forks, I would definitely pick to win this fight. But without the forks, all Yeti can do is ram into Blacksmith and hope it breaks. And Blacksmith is not going to break. And Al Kindle is a really good driver. I would say probably even better than Greg Gibson. I would say Blacksmith can just keep its front pointed towards Yeti the entire match. And Yeti would just get deflected off the front of Blacksmith. It would come in, but it would just get deflected right off. And Blacksmith can just come in and get multiple hits on uh, Yeti's top armor. And it's not gonna break Yeti, it's definitely not gonna do damage to Yeti, but it can win the decision against Yeti, and that's why I would honestly go with Blacksmith. Yeah, my reasoning for Blacksmith, Yeti, like I said in the Hydra fight, has no control over itself without the forks. And yet, and Greg Gibson has chosen not to use the forks after the Bite Force fight. That much was clear. He said that in the free shipping interview fight, so, it's clear that he won't use the forks. I don't think any for any 
like front configuration for blacksmith will make much of a difference but i do think the horizontal the quote-unquote horizontal counter will be the better option for blacksmith but i do think the forks will do the job also so i think as oblivion said al kindle is a great driver i'd say he's about top 15 ish in the driving category at least for 2019 standard um yeah uh and Yeti just, I think Blacksmith will take control over the fight, much like what it did with Rotator. I do think Yeti will not lose its drive and shit itself like Rotator did, but I still think that Blacksmith, in the end, will pull off the judge's decision. Um, okay, um, n no. <laughs> so, got a reason. Here's the that. thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. It's not going to be like the Rotator fight where Rotator's clearly like dying from it because I think Yeti's going to keep going and going. They're going to keep, they're going to, they're going to just keep slamming into Blacksmith like a monster truck nonstop, left and right. And I don't think there's going to be a knockout in this at all. There, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, but I do it. think that, I do yeah, think that Yeti is going to get the. Fight, I do think Yeti is going to get the judge's decision. If I just, if I just, so they probably won't do that much. I mean, they probably will like scratch it up. They might rip off that weapon chain, but like they, I don't see, I don't see blacksmith getting damage. And quite frankly, I feel like aggression is in the bag with Yeti because Yeti's just significantly faster of a robot. I don't know. Blacksmith yeah. is really aggressive as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, but not. I mean, this is Yeti though. This isn't blacksmith versus like. Jasper, you know, this is like a really fast, aggressive robot that like prides themselves in being super aggressive. Control, maybe blacksmith, but it mean? probably would be like split. What? It okay. would be split. But you think tornado versus tornado versus not, biohazard? Yeti, Yeti completely okay. cannot control blacksmith at all in this fight. I have to say. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but but unless, spinning, but unless, spinning, unless, but like getting. Uh, but successfully, like driving around in circles and like doing that's like monster trucks and stuff, is kind of control. That's not kind of control. The control category. That's aggression. It's gonna be like watching an episode of Monster Jam, dude. It's gonna be like you know, like Yeti, like jumping over. Jump, Yeti is Grave Digger, and Blacksmith is like those cars that he, that he crushes. If anything, if anything, Yeti's gonna get negative control points for be stuck, being stuck on its side for half the fight. Yeah, it's not gonna be stuck on its side for half the fight. He has an right. exaggeration shot, but Yeti is definitely going to get stuck on its side at some point in this fight. It's going to get flipped over. It's going to struggle itself right out of the forks. You have a minimum of 30 to 45 seconds where Yeti is just going to be circling around itself trying to self-flight. And Blacksmith can absolutely take advantage there. And I think you're underselling Blacksmith's aggression. It is also a really aggressive robot. And its hammer also allows for a lot of aggression. I, I highly doubt that uh, Yeti is going to sweep aggression. In fact, I think aggression is going to win be aggression, though, I think. I, it would win aggression, but it would be pretty split. It wouldn't be a complete washout for uh, Yeti. Yeah, but like, like, hear me out. If, you're, if, you're, if Yeti's winning aggression, it would win aggression, win. Yeti would win aggression, but just barely. But uh, Blaster would definitely win, would wash out the control category. And um, damage would also probably be split. Um, no, Blacksmith, no Blacksmith, shot. Blacksmith is going to do damage. Blacksmith is not going to do damage. But Yeti isn't going to do much damage either. Okay? Yeti's like, going to do I, miles think, more damage than Blacksmith. Blacksmith's hammer can't even more, do damage. Like, I mean, there's nothing. No. Like, what what can damage? Yeti no. do? It can, like, it can, like, slightly peel up. The damage. No, no. Okay, I agree. I could agree with yeah, you on the control. There's no damage. shot in which... Blacksmith does the same amount of damage as I think that as counts. Yeti. Like there is there is damage, damage, but Yeti is not going to do damage time. either. It's gonna like peel up. Yeah, the it, it has a drum spitter. <laughs> All right, okay. hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, let's hear me out here. Hear me out. Green, be the voice of reason. Hear me out. Let's let Spin Doctor share his opinion here, because Spin Doctor's been trying to say stuff. Spin, Spin, be the voice of reason. Come on, go for it. I have been smoke. pacing my thing, just listening to this conversation, okay? I'm okay. I think Yeti is a good height for getting a good hit on that chain or gear that hits that has Blacksmith's hammer. I think it could get a good bite on that thing and take it out. Even without that, um aggr ag aggression. Yeti is so fast, it's maneuverable, it's driven well. It's gonna keep coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. 
it's yeah, just like keep getting deep. hits in like in various places <laughs> blacksmith will control the fight i'll give you that <laughs> and but the thing is it's 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 hammer is too aggressive for its own good here because i think there just might be a point where yeti will get a good hit on that hammer or the thing in front of blacksmith that controls the hand moves the hammer i'm sorry kind of blanking on what that area that's called the gear that, I, I, can see, my, yeah, I, I can see that like rotator messed up the gear thing yeah i can see yeti messing up the gear as well but i doubt so yeah i just out. think yeti is aggressive it's gonna keep going in for those hits so now i'm I saying think one of those hits so will just move those hits will like, be on the hammer gets or remote the hammer close gear yeti, it's gonna come hammering down yeah until until Yeti snipes the chain. Okay, but here's my counterpoint. Blacksmith is neat. Yeah, but so Yeti is neat too. Spin is spoken. Spin knows. Spin so knows Finn, all. Is your, you know? Yeti, is your vote Yeti spin? My vote is Yeti. Okay. Oh yeah, I, King I, Spin. I, let's I'm go. I'm trusting you on this. Come on. Come on, bring it home, man. So before I share my vote, I'm gonna share the two outcomes that I think is gonna happen that I think could happen here. Because the one the first thing I'm thinking of is I actually think the configuration Yeah he's gonna go with is a little less obvious than you guys think. I think they're gonna go with the forks for this one, primarily because that kind of counters Spin Doctor's thing that Blacksmith that Yeah would might be able to get to the get through Blacksmith's chain. Like don't like don't get me wrong, like, it's still possible, but I think it's it's a so much harder task to do if Yeti has the forks configuration because with how those Why forks are angled, like if you if you use the forks that they did not use against Witch Doctor, if you use the ones they used against uh, uh that they use against Quantum and Kraken, which aren't like sloped with, with a straight linear slope right up into the air and stuff, like they could deflect Yeti's drum spinner and keep it from getting to that chain here. And the question is with this outcome, and the question is with this outcome is, well, Yeti did come with a durable frame and stuff. Like, Yeti's always been known as a robot with powerful weaponry and stuff, like all offense, not a lot of defense and stuff. Like, can Blacksmith's dam hammer potentially do damage to Yeti's armor? Like, no. I like. I personally would think the answer is. I I personally w would think it would take a ton of hammer shots in order to be able to do damage to yeti and blacksmith stuff but i think blacksmith i think blacksmith would need more than three minutes in order to I mean, secure yeah, that I mean, but but that's possible but, uh, but what i am gonna say though is that that is a possible thing too even even with if you guys deny some of that stuff too now here's the other outcome that i kind of see here like like uh, yeti will just come in, come straight in and just smash and stuff and yes. well, as we're well, we all we all know that. And yeah, he's gonna chew up the front, get to the sides and stuff, get in as many hits as they can before their drum spinner like potentially stops or something like that. Like, cause it did stop in the fight with Duck, and let's see, it did it stop in any of their? And I think it was working for all their for all of their other fights, but pretty sure it's but still, but but yeah, what? Okay, so now here is my vote. I'm gonna need a drum roll for this one. This is just overhaul versus ice wave all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeti. You asshole. Hell yeah. No, Let's yeah. go! Angry. You asshole. <laughs> you yep, yet Yeti is getting my vote for this one. Like but like the method, the, like the only way, the only way I see Blacksmith winning this fight is by knockout and stuff, which would really involve them pulverizing and Yeti with that hammer and maybe getting through to their not a lot of armor is the thing. But if, if this was a ju if this was if this was a judge's decision, like Yeti would almost hands down win that one. And I see civilians trying to rig it and stuff, so. Or, all right, yeah, so in terms that. of the judge's decision, damage, Yeti is almost certainly going to win that category and stuff. Yeti has the more effective weapon by a long shot. Like, 
Yeah, yeah I, like see, in terms in I terms of the three point him. in terms of the three point damage, like Yeti's either gonna shut out Blacksmith on that or get a two to one edge on that one. Like if Yeti's drum spinner stops, or if Blacksmith ends up being able to dish out some sort of damage. When it comes to aggression, I personally think that one's gonna be split because like both of that both Al Kindle and Greg Gibson are really aggressive drivers. Like this is just going to be a flat out driving war, all out aggression between both of those. Because like, yeah, like in all of their fights prior to this one, we've seen both of them like power through with a lot of aggression. And in terms of control, if Blacksmith comes in with the forks, as I predict they would, I think Blacksmith would win the control area. Uh, I would probably, I would probably bet that they would get both control points, but I don't think that's going to be enough to take out to counter like the damage points yeti might get as well as the aggression point i think they would so i think yeti's gonna win this one on damage and aggression you know what i think i think oblivion i, I can see that okay, i expect that i think oblivion i would I say i would still support the after winning but i can see yeti winning so i'm i'm, I'm fine with either i respect your uh, vote that's right, fair right. enough all right time for the 2019 I say something real quick. Sure. I, I say two things go ahead okay number one I think the decision would be split. <laughs> I, I could definitely see I that. that. You're definitely thing. not wrong. <laughs> I'll say another thing. I've been hardcore defending Yeti this whole time, but I won't say Blacksmith is actually my favorite bot. <laughs> I think there's another person in our group chat that his favorite bot is Blacksmith. Yep. We do have one person in the group chat who does favor Blacksmith as well. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so now it's time for the 2019 finale, which is the 12 seed huge versus the 2018, no, yeah, the 2018 champ and the 11 seed yeti. So, how do you think this fight will go? I think this will be an insane uh, matchup. I will have to go with huge. Um... Yeti, both of these bots are not going to get, are not bots that particularly control fights. Yeti is probably going to go with its forks to get better control over Huge, but Huge is going to mangle those forks. I don't... He's going to destroy those forks and get a lot of damage points uh, on the way. Apart from that, Yeti is also known for losing wheels. Um, Hugh is going to rip off a wheel or two. It's going to it's going to do serious damage to the aluminum drum. It's gonna overall do a lot. And again, Yeti has pretty thin armor. It's not like really thin, but it's it's decently thin. Uh, it's not really good. So Hugh is probably gonna massacre the top of Yeti. He's gonna do some a lot of damage to Yeti here. Mangle the forks, mangle the tires, the drum, and probably maybe even break through the top armor. Um, don't get me wrong. You Yeti can definitely win this fight if it drives a perfect match. But Greg Gibson is more of an aggressive driver than a tactical driver. And that's going to come to bite Yeti here because you can't, um, in this specific case, Yeti is probably not going to beat Huge just by running into it. Huge is going to, as I said, Huge is going to do a lot of damage and it's eventually going to win the fight on a decision probably. And I, I do think Huge is going to be the 2019 uh, champion as well. All right. What do you guys get? What do the rest of you all got? I think I'm going to go Huge too. Um, there's just so much free real estate on the top of Yeti. I think Huge can take advantage of. Corey loves that word. I think Yeti is too aggressive for its own good. That I think what's gonna happen is it's gonna keep charging at Huge, and then Huge is just gonna keep adjusting or just take the hit and then just get Huge into its grasps and just smother him until hit Yeti tries to leave or until it gets good enough hits on Yeti to like take out a tire or take out the weapon or just get a good hit on the top in general. I'm not sure what Greg Greg Gibson can do in this fight other than just push and just hope that one of those drum hits will like do something good enough to damage huge or something like that. Green Corey, what do you two got? You could go first, Pori. Pain. I vote huge. All right, Green, what do you have? I think huge is going to absolutely dominate this fight. Like, I, 
like, don't get me wrong, like, I think Yeti is going to be able to chip, like, all Yeti, I feel like, is going to be able to do is, like, charge at those wheels and hope to chip off bits and pieces of those wheels. And I feel like Yeti is definitely capable of doing that with that drum spinner, but it's going to take a while before he can actually, like, do some, like, major damage and stuff. Because, like, if he takes off small bits of Huge's wheels, similar to, like, what Hypershock was able to do when they fought Huge, like... Like, that was all minor damage that Hypershock was able to do. Like, Huge was still able to rock and roll at 100% throughout that match, even with that damage that they took. But I feel like this would be a similar situation if these two fought. And as well, like, like this is the spinner that could easily massacre Yeti if Yeti isn't careful. Like, potentially get through the top armor get to some wheels and stuff like i personally think yeti is not well de not even close to as well defended as hypershock was that season and i think huge will win this one and i'm gonna say a minute long knockout to be honest i think this one's gonna be rather quick and stuff or i just saw your dms you sent me like 20 minutes ago when you couldn't say. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm personally going to go for Huge as well. Uh, I don't think there's much that he can do. I think Huge is going to avenge Blacksmith for the bullshit that happened. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go for <laughs> Huge in this one. So, Huge wins by unanimous decision, takes out the 2018 champ, and is our 2019 champion. All hail the glory that is Huge. I have to say, honestly, though, if Blacksmith did beat uh, Yeti, I would vote Blacksmith to beat Huge as well. Same. So. <laughs> Alright, so, yep, Huge is our 2019 champ, and that will do it for this episode. Anything you guys want to add in this video before we leave off? You should unsubscribe to Civilian Arc and subscribe <laughs> to Green Square, Porinog, Oblivion Arc, and Spin Doctor. Instead. Oblivion arc? Oblivion arc? Who the fuck Oblivion. is Oblivion arc? Oblivion. <laughs> Who the fuck is Oblivion arc, Green? Oblivion should rename himself to Oblivion arc, and he could be the real arc in this group. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, I think that'll do it unless anyone has anything else to add besides Green giving me shit. Remember that time um, Eric beat Yeti Behemoth? the rake would be huge. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, so that'll do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to my four co-hosts for watching. Didn't know Oblivion was going to show up, but glad he did. And next... I myself didn't know it was going to show up. Yeah. And next episode, we will cover the fifth and technically final bracket we have. Up at this point, we will be covering the 2020 bracket, so be tuned and check out for when that gets 